Okay, so with Lab 6, setting up the DFSs, I said there are a few things that you should do in the real life versus how the lab has us do it. For example, on our server 1, we set up all of our items, but we did not do that on server 2. So I'm going to create an additional video. This is supplemental, or I'm sorry, an additional video for our lab 6. Uh, showing how to do RDFS correctly. So let's go ahead and open up our server 2 and we're going to go ahead and create or install the additional two features that we did not with the first lab 6. So install window windows feature fs DFS namespace include all sub feature Insta install windows oh that's because we have already exited out of our PowerShell so let's try that again I forgot we had already typed CMD. So install Windows feature file system DFS namespace include all sub feature. That way we have our namespace. We will have our replication, and we will also have our management console on both servers. Here, I'm going to go ahead and install the RSAT DFS management console. Install Windows Feature RSAT DFS MGMT Console Include all sub features Feature, not sub features So that way both servers have both sets of data that we need. I'm going to go ahead and I'm also going to create an additional share. MKDIR. I'm going to call my share company. Underscore data I'm going to go ahead and do my net share company underscore data equals and again I'm going to allow administrators full control oh administrators full control oh comma not period comma full it did not like that share name PowerShell just did not like that, so I went ahead and typed a command to revert our PowerShell just to a regular command shell. Typed in the same command, net share company underscore data equals our reservoir path. So that way we have our share on server 2. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hop over to server 1. I'm going to open up 
a command prompt. Now I'm going to do the th same thing. Make directory. Company underscore data. Net share. Company underscore data equals company data space forward slash grant administrators administrators comma full control that way both of these have our DFS or sorry they'll have our share company data and now we're going to go ahead and do our DFS portions of it. So open up our server manager. Tools. DFS management. We already have one namespace for backups. We're going to go ahead and create an additional namespace on the same server. And the server name is Tallwin 2012 DC. Oh, tar. Not tall, tar. Okay. We're going to call this company data. We're going to edit our settings. We're going to change the local path to company data. And we're actually going to do these are our share permissions. Administrators have access, full access and other users have read and write permissions. Within our share we can lock this down further by doing additional NTFS permissions directly on the folder. But for the share, I'm going to allow this. I, again, local path, pay attention to that. It will say it already exists. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, we do. Because we created the folders first, you don't have to. I just, out of habit, I always do. So this way we will do our domain slash our new share company data. And that's right. It's not going to be creating the shared folder because it's already shared. And click create and there we go. Here we have our So you're going to see there's no folders that are shared specifically. That's because we're sharing the entire company data folder. Namespace servers. Right now, we only have this namespace on server 1. So we're going to add an additional namespace server. We're going to name it, we're going to point it to target 2012B, that's server 2. It will copy it to target data. See, you notice we don't have to do everything from individual machines. Here, it's actually already accessing server 2. We already created the folder there. So that's C drive on server 2. We're going to give it the same permissions. That way it's on that server. And there's its share. Click OK. Because it's already shared, we'll get this message saying it's going to delete the share and recreate it. That's OK. So 
So now we have both our shares, our namespace servers there. Now, if for whatever reason server one goes down, the namespace is still up. If uh, server two goes down, the namespace is still up. This provides the best availability. But you notice we didn't get prompted for replication. So that's our availability for our namespace. Let's do the same thing for our replication. We're going to go ahead and right click on it. We're going to do a new replication group. We're going to do a multi-purpose replication group. Replication group for data collection is not always the best idea because that's more of a, a branch and main office location. I want to leave this scalable, so multi-purpose. Name our replication group. Well, I normally name it what we're doing, company data. Do a description, whatever suits your, your individual business needs. This folder will share company data among all users. Make sure it's the correct domain. Add the servers that we want to share. We want target uh, 2012B, our server 2, and we want tarwin2012DC, that is our server 1. So both our servers are there. They're there as members. Next, we want a full mesh. Again, full bandwidth, no schedule. We want it replicating constantly. And here we'll do, go ahead and do server one, just because we're on server one. What folder paths do we want? We actually want to point them to our specific folder. Double check our permissions just to make sure. We want existing permissions. So that's company folder on server one. Because that's our primary member. We don't get the option of selecting our other guy, but that's going to be our primary folder. Here is the local path. We're going to go ahead and edit that. We want to allow synchronization to other members. We're going to browse to its company data. That way, our folders to replicate and the path for the, our other members, that way what will end up happening is they will replicate back and forth. Double check our settings, go ahead and click Create, and we are good to go. It will not replicate or not uh, do it until the other guy gets it picked up. Takes a few minutes. So here we have our company data, our share. Here we have our namespace, again, shared. Both are high availability. So I'm going to go back to our replication. I want to click on connection. You'll see that they're sending and receiving to one another. Click on replication folders. Again, they are replicating to a uh, uh, namespace called company data. Delegations are the permissions. So now let's verify. I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of our DFS management on server 1. I'm going to exit out of our server manager again on server 1. In PowerShell. On server 1, I want to make sure that we are doing it. So that slash slash secure labs on demand dot com slash company data. 
and it might show as an empty folder, that's just because currently there is no data there. I'm going to copy test-1. You notice, here securelabs.com slash company data, we don't know what server we connected to. It's just whichever one first responded. So, let's go ahead and check our actual folders. Let's go to our C drive on server 1, go to company data, notice it's there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to minimize, I take that back, I'm not going to minimize, I'm just going to move off to the side our RDP window for server 1. I'm going to go ahead and open up server 2. That's the 172.30.0.18 address. I'm going to go ahead and open up its C drive and go to its company data. And it is not there yet. So we're going to give it some time to replicate. How can we verify that everything is set up correctly? Let's go and open up our server manager. And let's go to tools. Let's look at our DFS management. You notice our namespace is there. Our namespace is already there. Our application is already there. Our data is there. Our connections are there. Everything is there. So now it's just a matter of giving it some time. So there it is. This is on server 2. So I, I want to be able to show you that the DFS's work. Here is server 1, here is server 2. I'll do another, I'll, this time I'll do a test folder. Call it hyphen, or test hyphen 2. You notice it's dang near instant. Whatever we do in one, it's done on the other. There, it doesn't matter which one we're working with, they'll be the same. It all depends on how you set up our DFS, and as long as it is set up correctly, we are good to go. Uh, that's actually it for the supplement. I just DFS is so important that I wanted to make sure that you guys were able to see how it's set up correctly. Uh, with that, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.